question 32, probability. So let's look at what probability is. Probability is the likelihood that a particular event will occur. And we can show the probability using these ranges. Impossible, unlikely, likely, certain. And in the middle here, this would be as certain as not or 50-50. You could also use it, use numbers from zero all the way to one. Everything in between is going to be a fraction. So it's impossible that's zero. If it's 50-50, you have a half chance. And if it's certain it will happen, that's a one. And you have everything in between. You could also put it as a percent. Zero percent impossible, 100% certain, 50% is half. And how do we determine what probability is? We use the formula here. But whatever the event we're looking for. So if they're flipping a coin, the event would be, let's just say heads. What is the probability of landing on heads? The number of favorable outcomes, how many heads are on a coin? One out of how many possible outcomes? What are the total number of sides of a coin? Two. So we would say the probability of landing on heads would be one out of two or 50% chance. So that's what we'll be looking at today. So some other vocabulary words related to probability. Chance is just a word used when probability is in percent form. So if you're trying to find, so if you think about uh, the rain, the forecast, what is the chance of it raining? They're going to give it to you as a percent. Odds is a ratio of favorable to unfavorable. And usually they use the colon sign um, when they're doing the odds. Uh, sample space is just a collection of all the possible outcomes. So what are all the possible um, choices you can have when you're finding the probability? The complement of an event is just a set of outcomes in the sample space not included in the event. And then the theoretical is just the analysis of the situation without doing the testing. And experimental probability is just a ratio of occurrences to trials with testing. So theoretical based on numbers without testing. Experimental using the data from the experiment to determine the probability. So let's look at some examples here. The spinner shown below is spun once. What is the probability that the spinner will stop in sector A? So first off, I need to use the formula favorable. So sector A over the total amount of sectors, which are four. So there is one out of four chances of getting landing on A. In sector A or B, landing in sector A or B. We want to determine what the probability of that would be. Well, we still have four sectors. So four total sectors. And landing in A or B. So to land on A, you have one out of four chances of landing on A. Plus, you also have one out of four chances of landing in B. So if I add those two together, I have two-fourths, which reduce to give me one-half. So you have the probability of one over two, or half, of getting an A or a B. What about in sector A, B, C, or D? We could do the same thing as we just did for the second one, sector A or B, but instead of adding all all the all four, we know you can, you have four chances of landing on A, B, C, or D out of four chances. So you have a 100% chance of that happening. So it's, it is certain that you will land on A, B, C, or D. Now if the spinner is spun once, what are the odds the spinner will stop in sector A? So we are comparing the favorable sector A 
versus the unfavorable, not A. How many are not A? That would be three. So we would say the odds is one to three that it will stop in sector A. One for A, three for not A. So again, that's what odds means. For versus against. Next example. The spinner below or shown below is spun twice. Predict is the probability of spinning A more likely with one or two spins? Well, if you spin it once, you only have one out of four chances of getting it. And if you spin it twice, the more times you spin it, the better chance you do have of it landing on A. So it would be more than two. So more than so more than one spin. Find the probability of getting A at least once. So to do that, we can create a chart like we have here. So this is your first spin. This is your second spin. And your choices are A, B, C, and D. And then you have A, B, C, or D for your second spin. Now I'll just fill this in. You can get an A, A. You can get an A, B. You can get an A, C. We get an A, D. So this, those are your choices for your first two spins. Or you can get B, A, B, 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 C, B, D. Where you get C the first Second time in A the first time, uh, we get C, B, C, 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 D. Or we get D, A, D, B, D, C, D, D. And to make this a little bit easier to read, I'm just going to, this would be our second spin. This would be our first spin. So our first spin, we got an A. The second one, we got an A. So what is the probability of getting at least one A? So let's look at how many we have A's. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got seven with at least one A out of four, eight, 12, 16. So the probability of getting at least one A would be seven out of 16. But if you spin it once, you only have one out of four. So it's seven out of 16. If you do the math, it's seven out of 16. You get seven divided by 16 gives you 0.43. One fourth is 0.25. So you have a better chance of getting it, spinning it twice. Find the probability of not getting a at least once. Again, there's 16 opportunities. And if we count the ones that do not have, I'm going to circle the ones that have no A's. So you got one, you got two, you got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine out of 16 is the probability of not getting an A. Next, a number cube is rolled once. What is the probability of rolling an even number? Express the probability as a fraction and as a decimal. Well, a number cube has six sides, numbered one through six. So we have, to write as a fraction, we have six as our denominator. Rolling an even number, two, four, six, so that's three. So reduce, that would be half. And as a decimal, this would be 0.5. So the probability is half the chance of 0.5. A number cube is rolled once. What are the odds of rolling a 6? So it said odds, so I need to use a colon. So the odds of rolling a 6, there's 1. 1, 6 on it out of how many are not 6? That would be 5. So we would say 1. Five chances or the odds one to five would be the odds. 
the chance of rain tomorrow is 20% chance, then it's more likely, is it, then is it more likely to rain or not rain? If it's 20% chance, it's more likely not to rain. Because it's less than 50%. So it's unlikely to happen. What is the chance it will not rain tomorrow? The chance it will not rain, so if, if it's going to rain, it's a 100% chance. So 100% chance minus the 20% chance of rain would mean 80% chance of no rain. I explain your reasoning. Well, if there's a 20% chance of rain, there's got to be an 80% chance of not rain because the two percentages have to equal 100%. Next problem. Nathan flips a coin three times. Predict which is more likely, that he will get heads at least once or that he will not get heads at least once. Well, since there are two sides of a coin, it would be an even chance. Because you know, you you get the heads or you get tails. Those are your two choices. So you got a 50-50 chance. So let's find the probability of getting heads at least once. So let's figure that this out. So they're flipping it three times. So let's draw a, we'll do a tree. So the, this is the first flip. This would be the second flip. This would be the third flip. So the first flip, you can get either a heads or a tails. You have two choices right there. The second toss, if you got heads the first time, you could get heads the second time or tails the second time. Or if you got tails the first time, you can get heads or you can get tails. And then the third time, if you got heads the first time, you can get heads the third time, or you get tails. Or if you got tails the second time, you can get heads, or you get tails for the third time. Same thing with the, if you got heads the second time, you get heads or tails. Same here, heads or tails for your third. So now if we were to put them all together, you would have, we can get heads, heads, heads. We can get heads, heads, tails. We can get heads, tails, heads. Heads, tails, tails. We could get tails, heads, heads. Tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, tails, tails, tails. So those are our choices. We want to find the probability of getting heads at least, heads at least once. So we just count how many total opportunities Total outcomes, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight outcomes. And how many of them have at least one heads? So we need to count ones that have at least one heads. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven out of eight chances is the probability of getting at least heads once. What is the probability of not getting heads? at least once. So you still have eight and there's only one we are not getting heads at least once. So that would be one out of eight chances. Next, a coin is flipped three times. What is the sample space of the experiment? So the sample space we did on the previous one so we'll just keep, we'll just rewrite this one. So you got heads, heads, heads. You get heads, heads, tails. You get heads, tails, heads. Heads, tails, tails. Or you get 
tails, 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 heads, tails, heads, tails, or tails, tails, heads, heads. So there's your, your choices. You've got H choices there. What is the probability of getting heads? exactly twice and what is the probability of not getting heads exactly twice so exactly twice so i got one here got one here and i got one here so that is three out of eight chances of getting of getting exactly two heads the probability of not getting Exactly two heads. Again, they have eight choices. And that would be one, two, three, four, five. So five out of eight chances of not getting exactly eight. And the last one. Emily is a softball player who has 31 hits and 60 at bats. Expect the probability that Emily will get a hit in her next at bat has a decimal number with three decimal places. So to do that, 21 out of 60, so 21 divided by 60 gives us 0.35, but it says three decimal places, so 0 0.350. So they're batting 350. Emily's coach needs to decide whether to have Emily bat or to use a pinch hitter whose batting average is 300. How would you advise the coach? Have Emily bats and why because she has a higher batting average she's batting 350 the pinch hitter would be batting 300 and the last one Quinn runs a sandwich shop since she added turkey melt to the menu 36 out of 120 customers have ordered new sandwiches what is the probability that the next customer will order a turkey melt so 36 out of 120. 36 divided by 120 gives you 0 0.3. 0 0.3 where three tenths would be the, the would be the probability. If Quinn has 50 customers for lunch, about how many are likely to order a turkey meal? So if I take my 0.3 and I multiply that by 50. So 30% of the 50 are going to be turkey melt. So 50 times 0.3 would give you 15. So about 15 customers will likely come in to choose a turkey melt. So that is our lesson on probability.